What are you doing here? You don't belong here. That's right. You think just paying the rent makes everything okay. Returning home after a long time, I was greeted with harsh words. I've been working for 22 years, paying money for my family. I thought I was doing it for everyone. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? My younger sister, who shouted this from behind me, is the daughter of my stepfather's former wife making her my stepsister. My mother had remarried when I left home. Paying money is a duty as the eldest daughter. It's not worth anything more than that. You're the eldest daughter, so it's just expected of you. I don't understand why my family has to say such things to me. My mother wasn't like this before. Since remarrying, She's been influenced by my stepfather. I still regret not being able to stop this from happening. If you don't like making payments, why don't you just stop? This was my chance. Then I will. You're really okay with that. You won't be able to handle it anyway. I don't think it's good to assume that. Her, what's with all the muttering? I can't stand to see your ugly face anymore, so just get out of here. I have gotten their agreement. There was no need for further hesitation. Having reached my limit of patience with these people, I decided to have nothing more to do with them. I left my family home and stopped paying the rent. Then, about a month later, what have you done to us? A huge number of missed calls. They had been completely dependent on the money I was providing. Now they can experience the hardship I endured for 22 years. My name is Izzy. I always wanted to leave home when I was a student. The story begins in the summer of my senior year in high school. Izzy, I'm planning to get remarried. At remarried, why? Life stuff as it is, and Izzy, you're planning to go on to higher education, aren't you? I was planning on that, but if that's the case, I'll start working after graduation. It's okay, I've already decided. I was at a loss for words at my mother's sudden suggestion. Since my father passed away, it had just been the two of us. I wasn't prepared to accept a new family now. But contrary to my wishes, things moved quickly. And within a few months, my mother remarried. Next to the man who would become my new father was a little girl. Let's get along from now on. Ah, uh, let me introduce you. This is Abby, my daughter. A daughter? Oh, I guess I never mentioned it. She's your new sister. She's four years old. Try to get along with her, okay? Yes. Everything was so sudden. A whirlwind of confusion. Not only a remarriage, but also a new sister. This new sister of mine turned out to be quite a handful. Despite my efforts to get close to her, she either didn't respond or blatantly ignored me. I wondered, maybe she's just not used to me yet. I tried talking to her repeatedly, hoping to build a good relationship, but it never went well. My mother was very fond of this new sister, who was also attached to her. This made me feel like an unnecessary presence in our home. Then, an event that would greatly influence my life happened. What are your plans after high school, Izzy? I replied, I'll get a job and live on my own after graduation. My stepfather suddenly raised his voice in shock. What are you thinking? 
He said I was taking life too lightly and should at least graduate from college. Those words were incredibly irritating to me. Probably showing my annoyance, my father stood up and slapped my face. What are you doing? You're still a child. Just listen to your parents, he said. That's too much, my mother intervened, but my father wouldn't listen. What? You got a problem with that too? No, it's not like that. Come on, Izzy, apologize. I'm not apologizing. What did you say? I worked hard to find a job so I could live alone and eventually got hired as an office worker at a small publishing company. I left home as soon as I graduated from high school, thinking I'd finally be free. But it wasn't that simple. Almost a year since I started working here. Time flies. Yes, I'm grateful for the opportunity to work here. Grateful? We're the ones who are thankful. I'm relieved to hear that. I settled into my job and became comfortable at work, feeling fulfilled every day. Being physically and mentally away from my family was a relief. Occasionally, my mother contacted me. Initially, I responded politely, but gradually I stopped replying, thinking I wouldn't need to interact with them anymore. Then, something happened. Izzy, someone claiming to be your family called. Who? Did they leave a message? They said to call back urgently. Okay, thanks. I had a bad feeling. I hadn't told my family where I worked, and it was unthinkable for them to call me directly to the office. I called my mother urgently. You called my office. Ah, that was your father. He was worried. I hadn't heard my mother's voice in a while, and it felt somewhat cold. What do you need? Asked Dad directly about that. As she said this, the voice on the phone changed to my stepfather's. It's been a while. Have you been well? Why did you call my workplace? And how did you even find out where I work? I have my ways. Information like that is easy to come by. Anyway, Ezzy, from now on, you need to start paying our rent every month. What? Why should I have to pay your rent? You chose to leave home on your own, so it's only fair. I struggle to understand his logic. Why should I pay rent for a house I'm not even living in? I have no such obligation. That's impossible. Do you think you have the right to refuse? I know where you work. Just one phone call and I can easily manipulate your situation. You understand the rest, don't you? Huh? I honestly didn't know what my stepfather planned to say to my company. But one thing was clear. This was a blatant threat. If I complied and paid the rent, at least he wouldn't cause any trouble at my workplace. Reluctantly agreeing to my stepfather's demand, I didn't want to cause any issues at work. All right, I understand. But please don't say anything to my company. Of course, as long as you pay up. After ending the call, I slumped down, feeling powerless. I had fled my family, only to find myself trapped again in a perplexing situation. From the next month, I began paying $1,200 in rent every month. It wasn't an amount I couldn't afford, but it definitely required tightening my budget. My mother would call me every month to remind me to pay. Make sure you pay every month. You know what will happen if you forget. I'll take care of it. 
Don't think that your defiant attitude will last. At this point, my mother was completely under my stepfather's control, nothing like the warm mother she used to be. My only solace was spending time in a nearby park, gazing up at the sky, which offered a brief escape from daily stress and didn't cost a thing. It's time to go home. That day, as usual, after spending time in the park, I was about to head home when a man approached me. Excuse me, yes? Sorry to bother you. I've noticed you here often and was curious. Oh yes, this place calms my mind. I understand. I also come here often when I'm troubled with work. Is that so? That was how I met Danny, who would later become my husband. We didn't plan to meet regularly, but whenever we did, we enjoyed casual conversations. Eventually, we started dating and began to consider marriage. But I thought it would be difficult for me to get married considering my life situation. Especially I couldn't possibly tell him that I was being threatened by my parents with paying rent every month. Several years have passed since we became a couple and it was when I turned 30. Will you marry me? I'm really happy, but I understand that there are things you're keeping from me, Izzy. You don't have to open up right now. When you're ready, then you can tell me. Thank you. Please, I'm counting on you. And so, we got married and became a husband and a wife. I found out after we got married that Danny also had a bad relationship with his own family and his circumstances were similar to mine. Therefore, we never went to greet each other's families. Here we are. This is our house. This place, yes, that's right. I was stunned. It was a house as wonderful as a model home. I never imagined living in such a place. Danny, what do you do for a living? I finally asked him. Come to think of it, I haven't told you. Actually, I run a company. I didn't know that. Yeah, I accidentally forgot to tell you, sorry. I realized unexpectedly that I have married an incredible person. I was worried about how well we could get along, but Danny never seemed concerned about that, and he was someone who wholeheartedly supported whatever I wanted to do. Ever since we got married, we've had truly happy days. However, I was always concerned about the payments to my parents. I thought I had to tell Danny someday, but I kept missing the right moment. Then, one day, I was already 40 years old. Izzy, you have a phone call. A phone call? Okay. It was from an unexpected person. It's been a while. Do you remember me? Do you recognize who I am? You're Abby, aren't you? That's right. Abby, my stepsister who was four years old when we first met, has now turned 25. Do you need something? Not really. Just wondering if you're still alive. You're quite old now. Eyes that tall. I'm going to hang up then. Wait, we're sisters and it's been so long. Let's talk a bit more. Since I started living alone, I haven't visited my parents' house. Of course, I hadn't seen Abby either, and I had no idea how she had grown up. But just hearing her voice on the phone, I realized that this is how she would turn out being raised by those parents. By the way, about the monthly payments, make it $900 from next month. What? Why would that be? You don't have the right to oppose. Abby, are you still living in that house? 
Yes? So what? Don't ask unnecessary questions. Anyway, please take care of it. Before I could respond, the call had ended. I never imagined that this would be my conversation with my sister after decades. My only connection with that family was the monthly rent. I wonder where such a family exists? My husband, Danny, asked me with concern, Izzy, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, I replied. If there's anything troubling you, don't hesitate to tell me, he said. Sorry, and thank you, I responded. Feeling the limit of hiding the monthly payments from Danny, I was at a loss for what to do. I had thought about consulting him, but I was too scared of being rejected as a result. I understood that this was a selfish excuse because I had hidden it for so long. As I couldn't find a solution, time just passed. How about we go out for your next birthday? It's been a while, he suggested. That sounds great. But where are we going? I asked. That'll be a surprise on the day, he replied. On my 41st birthday, my husband and I enjoyed a date. We went to my favorite aquarium, enjoyed a meal, and had a very fulfilling time. Can we stay a bit longer? They somewhere I want to go, he said. Of course, I agreed. He led me to a park. It was the place where we first met. This is, I began. Yes, I've wanted to come here again, he said. I somewhat understood why Danny had brought me here. He never forced me to talk. While I appreciated his thoughtfulness, my heart always ached. I was reaching my limit, enduring the irrationality from my father, mother, and sister. I have something I want to talk to you about, I said. Sure, tell me, he replied. So, I revealed what I hadn't been able to say before. After listening to my long story, my husband warmly embraced me without any blame. You've endured well. It must have been tough, he said. I'm sorry for keeping silent. I apologized. No need to apologize, he assured. I was filled with gratitude for a husband who would accept such a story. Then Danny said, naturally, you'll get back at them, right? I looked at him. He had a somewhat amused smile. I'd like to if I could, but how? I wondered. Let's start by stopping the payments. But it's not fun just to stop, he suggested. His reaction surprised me, but I quickly became motivated to act. Then, shall we visit my parents' house? I suggested. A direct confrontation, huh? He said. Yes. You like that kind of thing, right? Of course. Excited, we went home and refined our plan. It was probably the first time I saw any so cheerful. By the way, I was wondering about your stepfather's job, my husband asked. He inquired about my stepfather's occupation. I had explained about my family situation when I confided a secret to him at the park, but it seemed he was still concerned about something. I told him everything I knew. Hamaisi, that's what it is. Did you figure something out? Yeah, little. I'll do what I can. Really? Then please do. Leave it to me. So, I decided to visit my parents' house next summer holiday. Of course, my husband would accompany me. There couldn't be anything more reassuring. There were still six months until summer, and during that time, 
my parents' and sisters' actions escalated even further. It was my mother who made the first move. I need a bit of help. Can you increase your payments from next month? What? Abby just asked me to increase them. What do you mean? There's a reason for it. A reason? As I said before, your household is no longer my concern. You're still my daughter. It's natural to help your parents. I could only sigh at my mother's words. I felt almost nothing for her anymore. Sure, I'm your daughter, but not his. What are you talking about? I've never accepted that man as my father after you remarried. What did you say? You don't understand. You're just following that man blindly. How dare you say that? Fine, I get it. My mother hung up without listening to the end. There was a time I wished she would return to her old self, but that seemed impossible now. This made it easier for me to retaliate. Exhausted from the conversation with my mother, I sat on the sofa staring at the ceiling when the phone rang again. I assumed my mother had said something to my stepfather. Do you even understand your place? How can you speak to your parents like that? You always talk back and it's infuriating. I'll take that as a compliment. I see. It seems you won't understand until you're hurt. Want to try? But then the monthly payments will stop. I could tell my stepfather was at a loss for words. No matter how tough they acted, all they really wanted was money. They would be the ones in trouble without it. It took me too long to realize this. I remember right after I started working, the frequent calls weren't out of concern but for money. Just wait. You'll regret this. I'm looking forward to it. I never understood why my father called. He hung up as if running away. Was that your father-in-law? Yeah. He seems to have a lot of free time. Well, I guess so. What? No, I just thought so. I think she might be really cornered. The call from mom felt like that too. She seems to be in trouble, but as far as I'm concerned, I wish she were more distressed. We'll meet her in person soon, so things will probably become clear then. Maybe. And finally, the day arrived. My husband, who accompanied me, was waiting in the car just in case. I, going in alone, had my smartphone on call mode in case of an emergency. As I nervously opened the front door, my eyes met with my sister who was there. Hey, big sis is back. I'm home. Why did you come back? Do I need a reason to? Well, I guess it's fine. Saying that, my sister went back to her room. I stepped into the living room. As soon as my stepfather saw me, he started raising his voice. What are you doing here? There's no place for you here. That's right. Do you think you're forgiven just because you pay the rent? My mother also glared at me in agreement. It was like this even when I returned home after a long time. I've been working and paying money for the family for 22 years. I fought about everyone. I was confident when I was with my husband, but now being directly criticized, I felt intimidated. The burden all this time was almost crushing my spirit. Huh? What's that? My stepsister yelled from behind. When I turned around, she was crossing her arms and glaring at me. Paying money is an obligation of the eldest daughter. 
It's not worth more than that. You're right, Abby, my mother said, nodding. You are the eldest daughter. It's only natural. Natural, less, as the eldest. How could you just leave the house on your own? My mother's expression seemed slightly sad as she said this. So, what do you want? This isn't a place for you. Standing in front of me, looking down on me, I clench my fists firmly in front of my sister. It's about the monthly rent. Oh, I see. You don't want to pay any more. That's right. I've done paying just because you say so. You think you can do that? We've talked about this before. What will happen if you stop paying? You don't want to cause trouble for your company, right? That was in the past. Hmm? If you dislike it that much, then stop. This is it. Now is my turn. Then I will. Are you really okay with that? You won't be able to do it. I don't think it's good to assume that, huh? What are you mumbling about? I don't want to see that ugly face of yours anymore, so just get out. I got confirmation from my stepsister. No more hesitation needed. My patience had reached its limit, and I had decided that I would no longer be involved with these people. As I was about to leave the house, my stepfather stopped me. You do understand what will happen to you, right? He said. I won't change my mind just because you're trying to intimidate me, I replied. A failure like you just needs to listen to your parents, that's all. And it will stay that way, forever, he retorted. I don't recognize someone like you as my father. No matter what you say, my mind won't change. I refuse to deal with worthless people like you, I declared. At that moment, my stepfather, perhaps out of anger, reached out and grabbed me. What are you doing? I exclaimed. It seems you need some re-education, he said. Ouch! Despite his age, his male strength was overpowering. I thought I was going to be hit. Just then, the front door opened. Who's that? Pleased to meet you for the first time. I'm Izzy's husband, the newcomer said. What? You're married? My father asked in shock. Yes, I've been married for quite some time now. I'm not a child, and I can decide on my own marriage, I said. My mother and sister finally appeared amidst the commotion. What's going on? Who is that man? My husband. What? I didn't see any reason to introduce him to you. Anyway, that's the situation, so I'm leaving now. I can't stand being here. Hey, wait. I have no reason to wait. At that moment, my husband supported me. If anything more happens, we will have to call the police, he warned. What? You have nothing to do with this. Keep quiet, my father retorted. This is getting nowhere. Let's go home, Ezzy, my husband said. Yes. And so... My husband and I left my parents' house. The shocked and angry expressions on the faces of those three will be unforgettable. Perfect timing, right? I was nervous thinking what would have happened if I hadn't arrived in time. But what matters is what happens now, my husband said. Yes, now it's time for those three to suffer, I agreed. We talked like this in the car on our way home. After that, I completely stopped paying the house rent. About a month later, there was a huge number of missed calls from my stepsister and her family. 
They must be in trouble, I thought with a smirk, since they had been entirely dependent on the money I used to provide. I just followed your instructions, I said. What? But I don't think it's that big of a problem. After all, both you and Dad are working. Upon hearing my words, my stepsister, losing her earlier momentum, began to speak in a low voice. Dad got fired. Fired? Why? I don't know the details, but someone from the headquarters came and said something about it. At that moment, I remembered a conversation I had with my husband. He had shown some interest in my father's job and had said he would handle it. I thought my father's dismissal must be the result of some action taken by my husband. But you're here, aren't you? I'm not working. What? I'm telling you, I'm not working. And you were so assertive, even though you're not working. My stepsister fell silent. It's really hopeless. You all created this situation yourselves, so the three of you in the family should sort it out. We can't live like this. What does that have to do with me? You're the eldest daughter of this house. Of course, it's related. This is going nowhere. I'm hanging up. With that, I unilaterally ended the call. It had been a long time since I felt so relieved. Indeed, distancing myself from that family was the best decision. I sometimes wish I had decided sooner, but perhaps it was fate that it ended up this way. Later, I received a call from my stepfather. I didn't think you would really stop the payments. I need your help. What? You're saying that now. I'm not going to help. Handle it yourself. Wait, please. No, that's it. Wait, this conversation isn't over. I have nothing more to say to you. After that, I received several calls from that family, but I never responded. Are you okay? There's no problem. Good. By the way, can I ask something? Was dad getting fired your doing? Oh, you noticed. Yes, that's right. I got curious and looked into it, and it turned out that your father-in-law's company was a subcontractor of ours. Ah, uh, I thought so. Your father-in-law was causing problems at work, so I just dealt with it. I see, so that's why he was fired. My husband had been supporting me behind the scenes, making it easier for me to get back at them. He really is a considerate person. From now on, Izzy, you should just think about yourself. That's right. Thanks to you, Danny. I'm grateful. Thank you. My gratitude to my husband was beyond words. He really saved me. I believed I could finally live peacefully, but it seemed that the family hadn't given up yet. How they found our house was unclear, but all three of them showed up at our home. Why are you here? How did you find out where I live? I asked someone I know. I see, so that person was your source of information. They investigated my company too. I'm sorry, please forgive us. Come on, Abby, you have to apologize too. I'm sorry, please. Of course, I had no intention of forgiving them. Just stop it. It's unseemly to behave like this. Just go home. But if things stay like this, we can't make a living. That's your own fault. It's the result of the trouble you kept causing at the company. Hey, how did you know that? Your company, it was a subcontractor for my husband's company. What a coincidence. 
Hearing this, my stepfather collapsed in despair. What a foolish man, he deserved him right. Do you understand now? It's pointless for you to come here. Oh, should I call the police instead? These words seem to be the final blow. My mother and stepsister, with their shoulders slumped, took my stepfather and left. Time passed, and my husband informed me about the current situation of the three. As expected, they couldn't afford the rent and had moved into a cramped, old flat together. Their family relations had worsened, and they fought every day. It's the natural outcome, as I fought. I don't know what will become of them, but I hope they spend the rest of their lives in regret. As for my husband and me, we're living fulfilling days. From now on, I want to think only about a future with my husband, Danny.